Today I'm going to talk about the story of this Jenea wrench and how I saved it from going to the dumpster. We bought this in 2008 when we were doing the uh, kitchen remodeling. We like the feature and like the contemporary looking. Uh, the thing we like the most is if you look at this top, it is overlapped with the countertop. So there is no gap in between the stove and the counter. So nothing is going to fall down into in between the, the crack. Now, I don't know why they don't make this anymore. Uh, the only thing I have seen is uh, um, Bosch is still making the sliding like this, but all the other manufacturers, they make a thing that's, you know, there's no overlap. Uh, such a great feature, what a pity. Now, with that said, uh, this wrench has a, a, a huge problem, okay? Uh, the touchpad here, they don't work, okay? Well, they work about two years, and every two years I have to replace it. And when you replace it, they don't just give you the mylar here. That's what I want, you know, so I want them to see if they can sell me only this mylar, but they cannot. They have to sell me the whole front, whatever, the whole piece here. And that's, you know, cost is one thing, and uh, a lot of waste as well, right? Go to the dumpster, the, the old one. So after maybe five, yeah, f at least four, four or five replacements, I decided, you know, I'm not gonna do this anymore. But what's the alternative it is to throw the whole thing into the uh, dumpster. And I want, don't want to do that either, right? So I come up with an idea and try to replace this front control with a remote control. Now, I'm going to show you how that works. So, basically it is a it has a web page and then the web page each key here is matching with the key on the keypad. Ah, not really interesting. Um I'm looking at the the key name are a little bit mismatched. Uh the r main reason is uh this is already a revision they made that's not matching with the previous one. My keypad was made according to the previous keypad that I torn apart and dissected and uh, uh, reverse engineered. So this is not, but all the functions, you know, so you, you, can, you can say, hey, I want to bake. And then you can see when I push this, the beep is from the, the instrument, uh, the, the control panel itself, and then show me what temperature I want. I can use the temperature, say if I want to 350, and then we'll just start to preheat to 350. And of course I can cancel this. And also you can dial in any number, right? So whatever the, uh, the temperature you want, all the features. And you can say, oh, I want to turn on the light. You can see the bottom light turns on and turn it off. Uh, I can also do the setup, for example. I can set up the time and clock. So anything that the keypad has uh, on the on the touch panel that is uh, is working on this, and I even arrange that. So even um, the the arrangement of the key of the keys are similar, right? So let me close that. So this works really well. Okay, I have a control. Uh, module inside sits in between this and the, uh, there's a chamber a little bit smaller chamber place set. and also my control circuitry is not big anyway so fits in there really well and then that to actually communicate with the Wi-Fi and go with this uh, any any uh, phone uh, with the Wi-Fi and it has a web page so you can just uh, push the keys and that will simulate uh, sort of like you have a key push and then it will react exactly just like you have a key push and this way and everything you know is working now i saved this um, range to go to the dumpster you know so waste is one thing and the environmental impact is huge right such a big thing and who knows how, how long it will be sitting there to uh 
disintegrate. But this is the approach and I'm going to next tell you how exactly I did it. Ha! Huh. I still have this old whole front panel. Uh, I, I didn't really throw it away in case I needed to uh, use something, I don't know. But I kept it and uh, I took it out and you can see this is how it works. So this is the front uh, touchpad and the, to the end, to this side, it has this plastic tail that goes back in to connect to the controller. Now the problem is from here, because this thing is sitting in a place that's uh, sort of like getting warm and hot. Uh, when, when you have the, the stove turned on, it gets really hot here, uh, but also gets cold. And then the condensation here is destroying, the condensation here is destroying the printed circuit. The printed circuit is not copper or anything that's more like a carbon stuff and that's why it uh, gets corroding and then eventually this whole thing broken and i have no way to fix this uh to solder whatever but nothing to solder on so that's the the only way i can do is to find out what these wires are and then uh to reverse engineer this this is the diagram of that keypad. After I turn it apart and uh, look at uh, how many pins, that's 13 pins, and how, what kind of scan, it's a scan keyboard, right? What kind of uh, keys sitting on which uh, node. And then this comes up with this diagram. The diagram alone is not enough. We need to know the dynamics. So I get a scope, look at the, the scan signals, and this is what they look like on the scope. Uh, each scan for the complete circuitry is about uh, 15 milliseconds complete keypad and each key input is being pulled down for about two two and a half milliseconds uh, so if you have one of the keys pushed at the same time it should go output uh, at this period as well right so it should be dead on and not really giving you much space to to um, response delay or whatever so in in that case, so microcontroller won't work. Microcontroller will respond within several milliseconds. So uh, we need to have a different approach. We can have combinational logic or we can have uh, uh, discrete circuitry. But the easiest way it seems like uh, is a, either a CPLD or FPGA. Uh, you can get a CPLD from Amazon or eBay for about $10. That's what I did. This here is the diagram, uh, the, the picture. You can see that. And then the, uh, that is going to handle uh, all the ins and outs, right? But the logic is coming from, depends on what key you pushed and uh, uh, in, the, in the remote terminal. And then it will determine uh, which output pin to be pulsed at the, the appropriate time. This is the microcontroller that sits on the other side of the PCB. In the back is the CPLD. Uh, so the controller is a ESP8266. It handles the user interface and decodes the key you pushed on the web interface and through five pins uh, to connection to the CPLD. So with those encoded signal, those five pins, uh, the CPLD knows which key you pushed. So in the appropriate time, when the, the scan line comes in, it will uh, regenerate the appropriate output pin signal to go back to the oven controller. Here's my PCB goes into this 3D printed box. And then finally, how it goes into the oven uh, in behind that uh, controller. So the end result is we have one less piece in the landfill. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. See you later.